Hi, and welcome to the Merryweather Knitting Podcast. My name is Gabriella, and I'm coming to you from my home in Germany, where I'm so excited to chat with you today about all that I've been knitting and crafting and making this week. I have some very exciting things to share with you this week, so I hope you'll stay tuned. If you're looking for anything in particular, I will leave all the timestamps below in the description box, as well as everything that I mentioned in this episode. All the yarn, all the patterns, all the information should be there. And if you have any questions, you can always feel free to leave a comment or message me. To start, I have to show you an incredibly special package that I received in the mail this week. I just received it a couple of days ago and I've kept it in the box to show you because I think it's so beautiful and it's so incredibly special. If you're new here, I am hosting a knit along this year. For the whole entire year of 2021, I, along with two other podcasters, Bella of Hundred Acre Wool and Sophie of the Brega Creations Knitting Podcast, are hosting a knit along where we're knitting patterns from the book Tudor Roses by Alice Starmore. This is an iconic book by an iconic designer filled with beautiful patterns for garments and accessories as well, all inspired by women of the Tudor dynasty. So each pattern is inspired by and named in honor of um, a woman from the Tudor dynasty. And I've always been a huge reader of biographies and historical fiction and um, I just love history so much and I've loved the Tudor dynasty for a very long time. And so each one of the women in this book, each one of the women who these patterns are based on mean something to me. I feel like I know them. I've read books about them. I've watched documentaries and TV shows and film adaptations. So this is a book that really means a lot to me and that's very close to my heart. Not to mention that Alice and Jade Starmore's designs are just so beautiful and impeccable and I've wanted to knit um, their designs for a very long time. So this is a very special project to me, a very special knit along, and it's really exciting to be able to share that with you. Those of you who decide to join with um, Bella and Sophie, it's really an absolute joy and so exciting. So Virtual Yarns is very graciously collaborating with us in this knit along, and they very generously sent me the yarn for my first project, which is the Elizabeth the First. I'm so excited to show it to you. It's so beautiful. I have not yet even taken it out of the box. The moment I opened this box, I was absolutely in awe and it just, it's such beautiful yarn. So let me show you how it looks. Here it is, still in the box. Oh, look at that yarn. The color on the website is very, very true to life and very accurate, but how it looks in reality is even more beautiful and even more stunning because all of the little colors come through and it's very, very rich and multi-dimensional. So I will show you how it looks there. And you'll see more photos of it along the way. But this is the yarn. So here's the label. The label is also so beautiful, it kind of shimmers. And so it's the Alice Starmore Hebridean two-ply yarn. And this is the colorway McHair. It's a very, very beautiful colorway. This Alice Starmore Hebridean two-ply yarn is 100% pure new wool made in Great Britain and it's absolutely stunning. Um, it's rustic because it's, you know, it's very minimally processed, beautiful, but it's also, it has a beautiful feel to it. It's very bouncy, very soft, um, but you can also feel that it's very natural. So the Elizabeth I, I'll put a photo here, is a pattern which is only one color, but it has some very beautiful shaping and extremely beautiful details. And because of this, I wanted to make sure that the color showcased those things. I think the design itself, just the shaping and the details is so intricate and so beautiful. It's just, it's simple, but there are like just these elements in it which elevate it to this amazing regal almost level. So I wanted to find a colorway that would fit me very well. And this color does that. Now, the McCair colorway is a very beautiful, multi-dimensional, like I said. I don't know what other word I can use to describe it. It's a very rich, um, neutral green base with many different colors intertwined in it as well. I've heard an interview with Alice Starmore, and in the interview, she said that the yarn is dyed in the fleece and then spun together. The color is just so rich and natural, it's almost truly like a landscape, which is also why the colorway name is Macare. So the Macare landscape, after doing research and reading on the Virtual Yarns website, the Macare is a 
flat plain land on the coasts of Scotland and Ireland. It's a unique um, landscape with its own unique ecosystem that is really, at least in Europe, only there in Scotland and Ireland. And the wildlife that's there, the flora and the fauna are all very special and very unique to Scotland and Ireland. And the colorway spoke to me when I just saw it. I mean, it's so beautiful, um, but also reading about it, I was so fascinated in it. And I feel like I have a piece of the Macare with me through this colorway. I feel like I could, you know, when you see the photos, it looks beautiful. It seems like, from, even just from the photos which I've seen, it's captured in this colorway. It's almost like those colors have been gathered and just condensed into this beautiful skein of yarn. And if I were just to take this skein onto a black and white photo, I could paint the Macare that I've seen photos of. I really, now that I've seen it, I, I want to visit so much. I mean, I've always wanted to visit Scotland and I definitely want to visit Scotland. And as a knitter, I think Scotland is a dream location, but now more than ever, I really, really want to go and see the Macare because of this colorway alone. I also have to say, you know, I have smelled yarn before on this podcast. This yarn smells so beautiful and fresh. I know that that's a bit of a strange thing to say, well, I'm talking about yarn, but I think that knitting and fiber arts is such a sensual experience. You know, you're holding this in your hand. The feeling of the yarn is so important. The color of the yarn is so important. But for me, I love the smell of yarn but it just smells so fresh and um, like fresh air. It's very subtle, it's almost neutral, but I was struck with that because pretty much whenever I get a skin of yarn, I smell it. It's just so, so beautiful. And it just smells like fresh air. And in my imagination, it smells just like um, the Hebrides. In my mind, <laughs> it smells like it. This yarn came to me from there. And so in my mind, it smells like the fresh Hebridean air. Um, if that's true or not, I'm not sure, but it definitely smells very good and very fresh and not very sheepy, which I like sheepy smells, but this is just, it's just so incredible. I'm so in love with this yarn and I'm so excited to start knitting. So yes, this is my next big project, my next pullover project. And I don't think I'm going to be able to wait very long to cast this on because I've been waiting for this, anticipating this project for such a long time. And I'm just so excited to cast it on. And I hope that some of you will cast on with me because this is just gonna be an amazing, my first Tudor Rose project. This is it. So that's my yarn euphoria. That was the most wonderful package to receive this week. So incredibly gracious of virtual yarns. I'm gonna share with you what I've been working on. So quite honestly, this last week, I've been a bit busy because as I mentioned last time, I'm about to go on a journey to the United States. Um, to visit my family, who I have not seen in such a long time. I think it's been over two years since I was last in the United States, and that's really hard to believe. When I say that and I think about that, it's just crazy. Two years is such a long time, but as you know, this last year, we've all been staying home, and um, my family couldn't come to visit me, as I mentioned before, but this is finally the time where now I'm able to go with my little daughter, Esmeralda, to visit um, my family and they're going to get to know her and meet her and it's just going to be so so special so I'm so thankful this is possible but the last week I've been preparing I've been doing a lot of different cleaning and preparation for my husband who's staying behind and who we're going to miss very very much but who I feel like you know I'm the one to run the household most of the time and so I feel like I need to get things prepared for him so he's ready when I leave. So the past few days I've been running around doing things like that. I've also had to do some bureaucratic paperwork things, quite a lot of phone calls and appointments, um, a couple of appointments in preparation because obviously traveling right now is difficult and it requires, at least for, for us from Germany to the United States, it requires quite a bit of um, yeah, preparation, testing. We had to do a couple different things like that, which... Um, yeah, just to be prepared to go. So I haven't had that much knitting time, but I have done a bit. Unfortunately, I've kind of disappointed myself on how far I've gotten on my so faded pullover, which is the pattern, the sweater I'm working on right now, my kind of stockinette project of the moment. Um, here it is. Last time, I think I was just finishing the body, casting off. I've cast off the body, obviously, completely. I'm very pleased with it. But my secret goal was to have finished the sweater this week. That was my secret goal. That didn't happen. My open 
public goal was to finish one sleeve, and that also didn't happen, but I'm very close. Um, this pattern is by Andrea Mowry, and there are two options for this pattern. You can either knit a full length sweater, or you can knit a kind of a cropped elbow length sleeved option um, version of it. Now I've chosen to do the cropped elbow length version because I didn't have that much yarn, but also because I like it. I think it looks really cool. And um, I think it's kind of fun for, yeah, this project to have kind of like a, almost like a shirt, like a little cropped, yeah, sweater. So I got this far. I've just got a couple of more centimeters to go before knitting the miniature little cuff. Um, I've already done the fading. I'm gonna keep this shade, this shade and this colorway for the rest of the time rest of the sleeve. Um, yeah, and it's going well. I'm happy with it. I'm just a little sad that I didn't get it finished, but I'm going to try to finish it tonight or tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to be able to bring this with me, so this is going to be on pause for a month, which is a shame because I would have loved to wear it, but it's quite cold um, in Chicago where my family lives, and I know that when I do finish this, it'll take me a couple of days max to finish this when I get back. I'll get a lot of wear out of it, late spring season and then again in the fall. So here it is, my little so faded. Um, the variegated and speckled shades are by a homespun house from a couple of years ago. My husband got them for me as a special gift. And this one here, this solid shade is just some sock yarn. I think this is Rome sock yarn. I'm not 100% sure. I can't find the ball band, which I don't know why I always lose the ball band. Um, I know I'm not alone in that. I know many other people do too. So I hope you have some grace with me. But it's just a simple um, sock yarn that I had in my stash, just a commercial one. And I love the combination. I love how it fades solid. And then I even like the little cuff. I really like it more and more the more I see it, this little kind of variegated speckled cuff. I think it's really cool. So I'm loving this project. Um, I'm sad that I didn't finish it, but it's okay. I'm not sure if I'm gonna bring it or not. I mean, I guess I could bring it and just finish it quickly, but I'm not quite so sure. I do have to say, I, my, um, tension on the sleeve has been a little bit uneven because I've been trying to knit continental style on the sleeve. And I've knit continental style mostly when I've done color work um, because I knit with both hands, but I am an English knitter and I like throwing. I like being an English knitter. I think it's very fun. I have nothing. I'm very proud of it. I mean, I don't know. I always feel like continental knitters can knit faster. I feel like I've heard that, although I know that there was one of the fastest knitters in the world. She also knits English style. And so, yeah, I'm not, I don't know if it's even true, really, that Continental is faster. I mean, it appears that way, but you can, you can knit English style pretty quickly. And I think I'm not the slowest knitter. I'm also not the fastest knitter, but I knit like this. I'm going to show you. And I kind of move my finger like this. I hardly move it, actually. But it's this pulling to keep the tension even that has been, I don't know, I think it's given me a bit of repetitive stress injury or something, some kind of in my arm. Ten, I don't know if it's in the tendons or what it is, but it's given me a bit of a strain. And sometimes after knitting for a few minutes, I'll feel, yeah, not pain, but just a bit of discomfort in my arm. And a friend of mine, who I met through this podcast, also had an injury and I talked to her about it. And she recommended also taking a break as much as possible. Um, I don't want to let it get worse. I don't want to make it worse by continuing that stress on that area. So I've been trying to also lay off it a little bit. When I knit more intricate projects, cables, lace, um, or even, you know, they're just, there are different projects where I really like to knit English because I need a very even tension. Or yeah, for cables and lace, it's just so much simpler for me to knit English. Um, and I can knit much quicker, but I've decided, yeah, while knitting stockinette as much as possible, I'm going to try to knit continental just to change things up a little bit and give some variety and to give that kind of muscle or tendon of some relief um, from not having to constantly be under that stress of holding it in that same position. So I'm trying to also be very good in my alignment, trying to sit up straight, trying to be very ergonomic in my knitting because I don't want to create long-term problems for myself um, yeah, if you're a knitter, it's something very important to you and you don't want it to get, you don't want to get, have to take a long break from it or stop for a while. So I'm really trying to just vary up my techniques. And I think it's actually good for me to practice continental, just to try to get my continental tension even. And I really have actually enjoyed it a lot. 
I think I'm going to continue doing that for stocking it projects when possible. Um, just because it's actually also a, a movement which you get in the flow of it and it's it's okay. I'm doing magic loop and that's kind of not that fun. I feel like if it was just in the round, it would be much more relaxing to just do continental because it's just, I don't know why, but I feel like it's so hard to then switch. I have to like let go of the yarn and then, I mean, probably experienced continental knitters would be laughing at me. But for me, it's just such a different experience to knit um, continental so constantly. But it's fun. And as you can see, the tension is not the best. There are little ladders and yeah, it's just not that great. But you can see on the side, it's pretty bad. But it's been fun to just practice. And I think that it'll all be okay when I give this a good blocking at the end um, and wear it. I think it'll all, it'll kind of fade and blend together, be forgiving enough that um, it's not such a big deal that there are these tension mistakes. I'm also pretty relaxed about those things. I like handmade charm. Although I have to say with some projects, I'm a bit more, I've become a bit more picky. Yeah. I mean, I'm my clover pullover, for example, this, I just, I've savored this so much. I have no progress to show you this week, unfortunately, on that project, but that one has also shown me how, how much I appreciate having a, a nice, even kind of foundation of being able to knit an even tension because it really makes the intricacy of this cable and lace pattern just shine. So I, for those projects that it needs to shine and I need to have good tension, I'm going to be knitting English, but otherwise, I'll practice continental and hopefully it'll help improve my speed and even tension in my color work projects as well in the future. So it's a lot of fun. I've also thought maybe to provide some more variety, I'll crochet or maybe do some spinning. But for now, yeah, trying to at least do continental in my stockinette projects is has been a good solution. So that's all the progress I have to show you here. Um, but it's, it's coming along. I'm really enjoying it. I can't wait for it to be done so I can wear it and just show it off. I love it so much. So that's my so faded and I'm knitting this pullover on the suggested needle size. It's, I think it's the size, it's the 38 bust size, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, that's the status of this one. The next project I'm gonna show you, which is the only other project I've been working on, and I've only worked a tiny, tiny bit on it. I have not finished this sock, just my socks, my Cornish cream tea socks, which um, is a pattern by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. It's a beautiful laced, a lace sock pattern. Absolutely stunning. And I'm knitting this in the Regia Four Ply um, Premium Cashmere yarn in the shade Pink Parfait. It's a very beautiful, light, cool pink, almost almost lilac color, but it's it's a very beautiful pink, light pink. Pink Parfait is the name of this colorway, which again, I just think is so beautiful. Cornish cream tea socks in pink parfait. Like, I don't think you could get any more ladylike princess. I don't know, princess isn't right, but like beautiful feminine. I don't think you could get any more feminine than this. And so I'm loving this project. It's so much fun. I love these repeats. I love to do them. I've, I've memorized the chart now, so it's just very relaxing and fun to do. And I can't wait to get to the next sock. But I think I've also not, I've done a couple of repeats, but I haven't done too much because I need to know the person's shoe size. I need to be sure about it. I think I know their shoe size, but I'm not 100% sure. And since I'm going to the States, I'll be able to find out what their shoe size is and then confirm it. So I don't know. I kind of want it to be, I don't want to make a statement like I'm knitting you socks. What's your shoe size? I do want it to be not a surprise, but a bit of a, yeah, a little surprise kind of, but they're very special. These socks. So there they are, the Cornish cream tea socks in pink parfait. I can't say that often enough in the Regia four ply cashmere yarn. And this yarn is very nice. It's really nice because it's soft and squishy like a cashmere yarn because it is cashmere. It's like a cashmere wool nylon blend, but it also, um, it's softer than a regular sock yarn for sure, but it's also it's also very sturdy. It, it's definitely good made for socks and it's gonna be good wearing, I think, I hope. So that's all I have to show you today. It's been a short episode, but next week I'm going to be in a different location than I am now in my childhood home. And I've thought about it, maybe I will, I thought about maybe interviewing or co-hosting a podcast or two with a couple of family members of mine who also 
make beautiful things. Maybe they can talk about those things with you too. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I would love to hear what you think. Until then, I wish you very, very happy knitting. You can find me on Instagram as Meriwether Knitting, and you can find me on Ravelry as Gabriella K. That's my username. And please join the Ravelry group as well, which is Meriwether Knitting. You can come there, chat, introduce yourself, it's so nice to hear from others and hear where you're from and what you like to make. I'd love to hear as well in the comments below what you're currently making and working on and up to. It's really been such a gift to have this community and I really enjoy chatting with you. So I wish you a wonderful week and I can't wait to see you next time. Take care, bye.